I'm Zach Childs and welcome to the True Tone Lounge. Today our guest is Pat Bergeson. Thanks for coming out, Pat. Thanks, Zach. Glad to be here, man. Well, cool. Yeah. Well, you know, when the name Pat Bergeson, you know, comes up in discussion, uh, one of the first things people mention is that uh, you're one of the few people that uh, can claim that Chet Atkins, you know, you know, helped you move to town, told you to move to town. Is that is that story true? Yes, it is. Yeah, it is true. Um, yeah, it was probably around 1991. Yeah, he called me on the phone and asked me to come down and play in a record with him and Jerry Reed, and so I um, so I did. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of a long story, but that's what happened. And uh, then I started working with him from then on for about from about 91 to 98, 99, you know, a couple years before he passed away, he started slowing down and, and uh, yeah, had a really great time. Yeah. It was great. So, and Chet had uh, Paul Yandel in his, in his band at the time too? Yes, he had Paul uh, as uh, playing guitar. He was the other guitar player who did a lot of the same kind of thing that Chet did. I mean, he right. knew every like Chet knew, you know, and uh, and um, yeah, the band was a uh, drums, bass, you know, and three guitars. So and I was one of the guitar players, and I also doubled on harmonica. Right. And uh, Chet liked my rock playing. Okay. You know, and then when I, you know, he found out I played jazz also and harmonica, you know, that was a big plus. But he wanted someone in his band who could do something different than what he did, and that's what I did. So you brought a different color. Yeah, I did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what made him want to add that color? I think uh, he uh, he was always sort of forward thinking and and wanting to uh, just add some spice to his show and and you know he's you know he liked rock guitar players and you know he liked my playing and he wanted to add something that was probably something more modern and youthful or however you want to look at it you know. Mm -hmm. What, what were some things that uh, that you learned from Chet? Oh man, I, God, I learned a lot of things. Well, he would, uh, you know, when we were in the studio, like we would be coming up with a, trying to come up with a solo or a part, you know, he would always, you know, tell me to play the melody or know the melody, sing the melody, and um, yeah, just try to try to be more tasteful and and. Uh, yeah. Less flashy, or however you want to, however you want to put it. Yeah. Um, Chet and, had such a, a a clean, you know, style of playing. Did did he practice a lot? Did I mean? Yeah, he did. He did practice a lot. He practiced every day, as far as I knew. I mean, he's always playing the guitar. You know, he'd sit up at night and stay up late and play guitar. You know, yeah. just like like a lot of us do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he was as. And one of the things, other things that I learned from him was how uh, I met him. I was probably 31 years old, and he was so into the guitar at his age, at age 65 or something, when I met him. And, you know, I just found that to be very inspiring. You know, here's a guy who could go golfing every day and just collect money, you know, and be Chet Atkins, and that's not what he was about. You know, he was always looking for new young talent and always had his ear to the ground and always checking out the new guy and wanting to steal licks from him and you know he was way into it. And how much was he into uh, tone and gear? Uh, he, I think he was way, yeah he was very much into tone and gear but I think it was mostly like his his sound was, um, he mostly used a clean sound. Mm -hmm. um, but he did after, uh, you know, when I started working from, for, when I started working for him, he got all the same pedals I had because <laughs> he wanted to like, <laughs> sound like a rock guy, you know, so I thought that was cool. What, so yeah. what, what kind of pedals were these that you were using that oh, Chet went out and bought? Well, I was using, I, I used a Rat Distortion mm -hmm. and a Boss Compressor. I think it was the compressor first, the, the green one with the four knobs, okay. and then a, a Rat Distortion. And then I had a boss delay and a you know uh, like a boss tremolo and yeah. and that's pretty you know basically that was the setup yeah. you know but so he went out and got all the same pedals I had the boss pedal board and that's pretty interesting yeah. to think of Chet you know playing through a rat pedal yeah oh yeah and then he start we started doing the uh, the tune changes made he did recorded that with Mark Knopfler and he did a little act on stage where he would crank hit his distortion pedal and play a rock guitar solo and and eventually um, 
uh, he started wearing this real long rock and roll wig, you know, there. He would put that on and then hit his distortion pedal, and yeah, that and that was definitely a funny part of the act. Yeah. Uh, from from some clips that I've seen, uh, it looked like you had some kind of uh, green Stratocaster that you played at yeah, the time. Yeah, I, st I still play that guitar. What, uh, yeah. what what kind of guitar was it? It's a it's a parts guitar. It was built by a, a, a f old friend of mine from New York named Daryl Gilbert, who still lives there and works on guitars and and um, it's a Warmoth body with mm -hmm. Bill Lawrence pickups, L five hundred pickups and L two fifties and um, ESP neck. Yeah, just a parts guitar. I still play it. Yeah. It's a, yeah. What kind of amps were you using at the time playing with Chet? Um, I think I was using my old uh, Tremolux, my old uh, Tweed Tremolux. But I also, um, you know, we, we would always rent amps on the road, and I would always rent, usually rent a, a Fender Blues DeVille. Mm -hmm. That's one that I still kind of go to because it just seems to like, yeah. it's pretty consistent. Yeah. Speaking of like rental apps and stuff, that's that's kind of a, a problem of the of the touring player. You know, uh, uh, you know, how many? So, do you do a lot of fly dates where you end up having to rely on rental gear? Uh yeah, I've had yes, definitely, yeah. definitely. So, yeah. what what are what are some things that you do to try to make you know rental amps sound good that aren't doing so great? Uh, that's a good question. Usually, just. I usually didn't. I didn't. I don't play super loud. Yeah. You know, I like try to get the best tone I can at a lowest volume. Yeah. You know, and then if I need more, I can put it in my monitor. You know, right. usually if I as, as soon as I, I find when I, I I've always been that kind of player. If I the louder it gets, it's hard for me to get the tone. I mean, I I want it up to a certain level, but but right. after a certain, I don't crank an amp. You know, I don't play usually play that way. So, well, coming yeah. back around to to playing. So you played with Chet. And so uh, you started playing for, for some other artists. Who, who were some other artists you started playing with at that point in the 90s? On the 90s? Well, I worked with uh, Shelby Lynn for mm -hmm. a long time. And these were people I worked with on the road, Susie Bogish and Shelby Lynn and Winona mm -hmm. and, um, uh, and Chet. And, and then most of the, a lot of the other things I did were just various other bands and, and you know, and session work, a lot of that. Did you so, play with Lyle Lovett? Oh, I played with Lyle, I'm sorry. I did play with Lyle for for six years. Okay. With Lyle Lovett from 95, 96 to 2001 or 2002. Somewhere, nice. around, somewhere around in there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so who were some of the guys in uh, Lyle's band at that point? Well, the first band that I worked with with Lyle was, uh, it was Jerry Douglas and Stuart Duncan, Sam Bush, myself, uh, Victor Krauss, um, Dan Tomlinson on drums, and Lyle, and his cello player, Dan Hagen, I mean, uh, John Hagen, and um, uh, James Gilmer played percussion. Yeah, so it was just like a nine-piece band or whatever. Yeah. And uh, That's a nice, nice it was, lineup. It was a great band. Oh, of course, it was just incredibly fun, just a great time. What were some of your favorite memories of playing with Lyle? Oh man! Oh, just it was a lot of fun just being with those guys and just you know being on the road and traveling with them and uh, the shows were always a blast, you know, and the rehearsals and the gigs were always you know it was very intense in a way that it was it was a good experience for me because it really at that point it was a time where it was, you know, uh, I felt was very important f for me to really, really shed that music and really learn it. And I remember putting in a lot of time working on the music and, and uh, yeah, we had, a, we had a great time. It was just yeah. a really great band. I mean, the fun part was just the gigs, you know, because it right. was always just a great show because the, the level of concentration and, and uh, it was definitely at a very high standard and a high level. What were some of the records that y'all were touring behind? Um, uh, the records we did was uh, Step Inside This House, mm -hmm. and uh, that had just come out, and A Road to Ensenada. Yes. Those were the ones, you know, we did a lot of the tunes from those records, and, and the earlier ones, too. Yeah. And, uh, those were big records. Yeah. 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 So who'd you, uh, who'd you work with after Lyle? 
Uh, with Ly after Lyle, I um I did uh, I did was doing session work after Lyle. I didn't t I took some time off the road and I started working with Susie yeah. some on the road with Susie Bogus in and uh, that was a real fun fun time too. We did that for several years. It was um it was a five piece band, you know, and I was playing electric guitar and at first and that was that that wasn't very many dates. And then later on, like around 2010, she put together a trio with myself and Charlie Chadwick on bass and her. And I was playing acoustic and singing and playing harmonica. And that was a lot of fun. Yeah. And, uh, and back then too, and then back in, in 2000, somewhere around there, I did some dates with Dolly Parton too, and that was a fun, wow. fun year. You know, I did about a year of worth of dates, you know, a handful of dates with her. It was, that was a lot of fun. And you were playing both guitar and harmonica? Or? Uh, just guitar. Just guitar. The, yeah, and that, and that was just guitar. Mm -hmm. Very nice. I've always heard, uh, you know, very positive things about wor working for Dolly, where a lot of people will drop whatever they're doing to mm -hmm. work for her just because she just uh, uh, she treats her people well. Oh yeah, she was just a really, really sweet person, great person to work with. Yeah. yeah. And so, I think uh, recently I've seen you play with uh, Charles Walker. Mm -hmm. So tell me about Charles Walker. Charles Walker was on Chess Records back in the in the '60s, and he's a he's a you know real soul legend, soul music legend. He's 75 years old now and sings his butt off. Just a great singer. And we have a a band. It's a, a B3 Charles Treadway on B3, Pete Abbott on drums, and myself on guitar. And Charles, it's a singing, and so it's you know it's basically like like an organ trio right. with Charles singing. And the band started as as an organ trio with Charles and I were doing, Charles Treadway were, and I were doing this, just playing jazz standards, you know, with the B3 and drums. And, mm -hmm. and then Charles joined us, Charles Walker joined the band and started singing with us. Yeah. And uh, we do the, we played on the Acme, uh, Acme Feed and yeah. Seed on Saturdays for the brunch. We've been doing that and that's, that's good fun. Yeah. I've, I've been out there myself. It's a, it's a. It's a hoot to you know get to see you know good music, especially you know earlier in the day, and you can take take your kids and, and, mm -hmm. and such. So yeah, yeah. So that that's been kind of a, somewhat of a regular thing, y'all playing at Acme on uh, for a brunch. Kind mm -hmm. of thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Tell me some of the other things you've been playing recently. Uh, well, let's see. I've been uh, I did but did that. I, I toured with Madeline Peru a while back, and then. Uh, and you were, um, there was, there's an Austin City Limits clip of you playing with her. Yeah, I did a tour with her and that was a lot of fun. We went all over the world with her, you know, playing big jazz festivals and stuff. It was a lot of fun. And then um, this last summer, I did, uh, I did a, a date with uh, Butch Trucks and friends with all the, all the Allman Brothers guys. Wow. With, uh, it was Jack Pearson and I were the guitar players. And uh, we're going to be doing some more dates this year. So that's, you know, that's been fun. That's with J-Mo and Butch and O'Teal and, and the whole gang, you know, so it's so, kind so, of fun. So y'all are playing Allman Brothers too? We played all, mostly Allman Brothers material. Okay. Yeah. So who's, but coming who's, up this year, we may change it around. I'm, I don't know what's going to happen with that. Yeah. So whose parts are you playing? Um, so are you playing more the, the Dickie or Dwayne I think parts? I'm probably, well, we're, Jack and I kind of split it up. You know, okay. of course, when it comes to the Duane parts, we yeah. know who's playing that. Yeah, yeah. So it would be know. Jack, Jack yes, Pearson. Yes, Jack Pearson, you know, one of my all-time favorites and the best slide player in the world. Anyway, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, we had fun. We had a lot of fun doing that. So looks like we'll do some some more of that this year. So yeah. mm -hmm. that, that sounds like a great, great gig. Yeah, it's fun. So, Pat, tell me about some of your guitar influences. Let's see, influences, oh my God, yeah. Um, well, I certainly was probably influenced at a young age by, you know, Leonard Skinner and, and all the great players in that band and Led Zeppelin and Jimmy Page and Jeff Beck and all the classic rock guys. Um, what, what got you but, more into the jazz thing? Well, jazz thing, I, I always, was always very intrigued by it, but I, um, I uh, you know, I heard Joe Pass you know, as a young person and really got way into him. And so he's certainly been a big influence and, and uh, George Benson and Wes Montgomery and uh, 
a lot of saxophone players and trumpet players too. Yeah. And what about the harmonica? Uh, harmonica came, I started playing that, getting serious about that in my 20s. And uh, I heard a, a friend of mine play harmonica one day on a gig and I just thought, you know, I'm gonna learn how to do that. So he gave me one of his harmonicas and I put it in my car and the rest is history. <laughs> you know, <laughs> how do you do that? You know, just, you know. Yeah. So you, you sat, you, did you really sit in your car and? and I practice, that's where I practice, in my car. As a matter of fact, I'll, I actually take country drives around Middle Tennessee just so I can pr practice the harmonica. So yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, that's where I learned how to do it. That's where I'm still learning how to do it, how to play harmonica. Now you, you've made a couple. You've made a couple albums through the years, and and one of them uh, features a lot of your harmonica playing. What yeah. was the name of that album? The album is called Hippie Dance. Hippie Dance. Yeah, and there's a yeah, it's a record I did with a tuba player, a friend of mine from Chicago area named uh, Dan Anderson, and um, yeah, it's kind of a funky. Yeah. Funky can, record. can people find that on, on iTunes? You can find that on CD Baby or okay. yeah, iTunes yeah. and everything. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's called Hippie Dance, and um, yeah, very nice. So playing as a sideman, uh, you know, what are what are some concerns? You know, like as far as like like gear and and such. Are, are you know, are you allowed to play as loud as you want? Do you need to be low volume? What are, what are some concerns like when you're playing with a Madeline, you know, Peru or someone like that? Oh, that in that particular case, that I was playing through a, a deluxe reverb on one. I mean, it was barely, it was like that low. I mean, it was very low on stage. And I love that. I just yeah. love that. You know, I love playing with bands, you know. I mean, I've I love playing rock and roll and I love playing yeah. loud, but I love when everybody can hear each other on stage, you know, and it's just a real low volume thing. It's like so yeah. easy to play that way and dy and dynamically, you know, you've just got such a broad range, you know. Also on that, uh, were you playing an ES330? 330, yeah. yeah, 330. Yeah, that's yeah, the, ho the hollow body kind of version of right. a 335 yeah. with the, the P90s it's on there. It's a 61 330, yeah. Nice. It sounds great. Yeah. yeah so did you, that. did you tour with that instrument? Or I did. You? Okay. I did, yeah. And, and you used that as your main, what other instruments did you use? That was it. That was it. I played that, oh, I played a mandolin. Okay. I a mandolin and played that. Yeah. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Well. You know, today, you know, you weren't able to bring your, your rig, and so we kind of provided uh, the, as close of a, a Pat Bergerson rig as we could. So you normally play a, a 67 Esquire, and we had a 67 Tele that we, uh, that we, uh, and, this, you know, and, we and I from. love this guitar, man. This is a good one. Thanks, Zach. Yeah. I love your yeah. guitar, man. I, I think it's time that you give me this guitar. <laughs> Let's talk about that. So when I, when I leave here today, I'm probably taking this with me. Well, <laughs> it's very funny. <laughs> it's very funny. And then we've got a deluxe reverb here, and uh, then we've got a, a couple pedals that we, uh, you know, kind of threw together for you. Uh, why don't you show me, uh, you know, how you use uh, some of these pedals? Like, uh, you've got the uh, Custom Shop Overdrive that you're uh, that you're using. So why don't why don't you let us hear, you know, what the what it sounds like uh, off. And then, okay. and then turn it on and, and play for us a little bit. Okay, here's with it off. Here's it on. And, and also show us, uh, you, you were leaving it on a lot in some of the, uh, the, the clips and even when you were playing clean. So why don't you turn it on and kind of back off the volume and show how you'd use it in a, in a cleaner setting. Yeah, here's, um, I mean, yeah, here I have the drive set about halfway and everything pretty much halfway up with the volume down and I've got the mid bump there turned on and it just gives it a nice, fat, chunky. In the segment where you played kind of a, a bit of Georgia, mm -hmm. uh, 
you had that on, and I think you also had some amp tremolo on. Mm -hmm. But that that was the sound that you used for that. Yeah, right. That's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And, and as and just having it on like that, it just sounds great. I mean, yeah. it's like yeah. I mean, for chords, you know, pretty damn clean, isn't it? I mean, it sounds very nice. Sounds very. Very clean and warm. I love it. Now you also use the uh, the True Tone Clean Boost. Show us. I, th I think you've you've had this on the whole time. Yeah, this is this pedal is is one of my favorite pedals that I have. It's. I mean, without the the Clean Boost on. I mean, it's you know it's the amp. It's just. It. It adds this chunky, fat, punchy sound to the amp. It's just. When it's on all the time, it's just really, it just makes your amp sound better to me. Well, click it on. Here's, here's, here's it on. Yeah. So that's, there's off. Here's on. I mean, it's not just, it's not just more volume. I mean, it's, it's a punch. Yeah, it's, you know, it's beefing up the mids and, and the low. And, and when the amp is turned up a little louder, you can really notice it. It's just like, it adds to the low end and it just makes it sound beautiful. It's kind of like a mastering effect, yeah. sort of. Show us uh, how you use the, uh, the H2O. And then the H2O, the setting I like a lot on the H2O is, is, the, is sort of the Leslie sound. I use it mainly for that, for the, nice. for the Leslie. And um, you know, there's various things that you can do with it. I can turn up the intensity. You get this real cool wobbly sound. And if I s slow down the speed, you can get this neat vibra. some really nice sounds with that. I really like it. And uh, let's see. It's a neat vibrato. space age sounding uh, and it's really cool for single line stuff too you know and if you use it with distortion you know you can get some neat things too <laughs> Appreciate you coming out today. Yeah, you know, coming to the True Tone Lounge. You know, it's a pleasure to you know get to uh, 
hear you play and get to know a little bit more about you. So, thank you. Zach, thanks, buddy. Yes. Yeah, man, and I'll, I'll um, just go bring the case. A yeah. gig bag will work fine. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fine. So, Good try. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye. Right.